What's up, Homestead Homies? It's Oscar with Doug and Stacy, and I'm Stacy. And today we are going to talk about the differences between baking powder and baking soda. For years, I had no clue what the difference was. I really didn't know at all until quite a few years ago when we moved here. I had went shopping at the bulk food stores in our Amish community and talked to a lady there who was shopping, and she told me that she makes her own baking powder. And I'm like, oh, because normally, you know, you just buy it in the store, you know, you put your baking soda in certain ingredients and you put your baking powder in certain ingredients. So she explained to me how simple and easy it was to make. And from that day, I have made my own baking powder. So basically, baking powder and baking soda are similar because they are a leavening agent when it comes to when we're, you know, cooking things, baking things. So the differences between the two, if you look at baking soda, it, it'll help when you're cooking to help brown it. It'll help your cookies kind of spread out a little bit more in your pan. And baking soda is more of a alkaline. So what it needs is something a little acidic to react to it, to kind of cause that chemical reaction. So when you use baking soda, you want to pair it with something a little bit more acidic, such as buttermilk or like yogurt, honey, molasses, those things go good when you're making and using baking soda. In baking soda, I would use like cookies and muffins are great. So I always think baking soda, cookies and muffins. Now you look at baking powder and baking powder already has an acid in it. So like the acid that we're going to use today is cream of tartar and cream of tartar basically is um, like a byproduct of wine making. So that's your acid that's already in it. So what happens with that is when you add moisture to it, then you get the chemical reaction and then it causes the rising, you know, things that you need. So like for a baking powder, a cake or breads, that's probably what you want to use for the baking powder. And it has a little bit more of a neutral flavor to it. So it's time to make the homemade baking powder. It's so easy. All you're going to need is baking soda. I like the Bob's Red Mill brand, arrowroot powder, or a non-GMO cornstarch. And arrowroot powder is a good substitute if you have, you can't have corn in your diet or you're on a you know specialized diet. So you might want to substitute it for that. We did a video on the canna plant. So we'll link that above because that's where arrowroot comes from. And then the last thing you're going to need is this cream of tartar, which is a byproduct of winemaking. I also did a video about cream of tartar because I love it. I use it a lot in my cleaning. It's very, it's wonderful at getting like ring around the collar and stains. We did a video on that, so I'll link that too. All right, so all you need, and the ratios are simple. It's just one part of the baking soda, one part of the arrowroot or your non-GMO cornstarch, Cream of tartar, two parts. Two parts of that. So it's very easy. And you just mix it all together, like so. And then you have your baking powder for when you need to cook. Now, a little note about baking powder. You can use baking powder when you're cooking and substitute it if you don't have baking soda. But you can't substitute baking soda in place of baking powder. Your baking soda baking powder can expire and it can lose its potency. So I'm going to show you two little tricks you can do to kind of find out if they're active. So here's the baking powder that I just made. So if you're, if you're going to check your baking powder to see if it's still good, you're just going to put like a teaspoon or so in your jar. And then with the teaspoon, I'm going to probably put, you know, like a third of a cup of water or so in there. And I'm going to watch for a reaction and see if it fizzes. And it is. See it? It's fizzing up. So I know that's good. It's fresh. I just made it. The way you can tell if your baking soda is good is you just get a little bit. You know, you can do a teaspoon or even less. And then you need any kind of vinegar. It can be white vinegar, apple cider vinegar, any kind of vinegar. You just put a little squirt on here. And here's a great science experiment for the kids. <laughs> I love to use this to clean. It's the best cleaning in your bathtub and your sink. Makes a good volcano too for a science experiment. And speaking of the kids, 
We will have the winners of our essay poem contest for our kid, Homestead Kids by the end of this week. So stay tuned, watch those videos, and find out who is the top three winners of our poem contest. Actually, all you kids were the top winners. It was really hard for me, and it's still really hard for me. I still have it down to six, so you will find out in the next few days. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a Homestead Homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.